Hello everyone. Today in the series of Dr. Pix's interviews, we have with us Dr. Kaushik Ghosh, who is a consultant neurosurgeon and deals with complex spinal conditions, especially tumors and deformities. So our today's topic of discussion is total posterior facet replacement for degenerative spinal spondylolisthesis. I mean, this is relatively new technique. Uh, it is an implant which is devised uh, with the purpose that we treat spinal spondylolisthesis slightly differently. The standard treatment for spinal spondylolisthesis, especially the lower grades mm -hmm. with stenosis, those who have symptoms, mm -hmm. The common symptoms are difficulty in walking mm -hmm. and it's a fairly common condition, especially in slightly elderly age group. Uh, and the present treatment standard is we either decompress the spine to give more space to the nerve mm -hmm. or we decompress along with stabilize the spine with some rods and screws. Mm -hmm. So that has a relatively good outcome. But the concept of this special total posterior facet replacement came with an idea that we do decompress, we stabilize the spine, but at the same time, we keep movement of the spine. Okay. And the philosophy behind that is, if we can keep the normalish movement of the spine, mm. then it will stop developing disease on the adjacent segments. That segment above is usually affected mm -hmm. when there is, yeah, you fuse means you join two bones. So it puts more pressure on the bone above. If we can keep some movement, that pressure will not be there. So okay. in long term, the deterioration of the other levels will be prevented. Will be so uh, Dr. Ghosh, in what conditions can we use this special procedure? Yeah, as you said, it's it's still quite new. Yeah. And it's restricted now to lumbar disease degenerative mm -hmm. conditions in grade one and grade two spondylolisthesis. We can't use it in higher grade. Mm -hmm. And we use it only at L3-4, lumbar 3-4 right. or lumbar 4-5. Okay. If it is further down or up, we can't use we can't it use because it. the implant itself is quite bulky mm -hmm. to give that range of motion. Mm -hmm. We have selected, uh, we have done a study uh, in our center and we have selected 10 patients where uh, they are either degenerative listhesis at L3-4 or L4-5 with spinal stenosis and it's causing symptom to the patient, right. either in the form of quite severe back pain or leg pain mm -hmm. or neurogenic claudication. So uh, when we talk about this new technique, how, what makes it better than the conventional technique? As I said, the philosophy came with the idea that when we are fusing the spine, the problem is it is causing disease in the other levels. Mm -hmm. So the advantage is looked at that it will stop or prevent development of disease at other levels. Right. And as I said, it's still early days to mm -hmm. say that it's only three centers in the world have done this. Mm -hmm. One in Israel and one in Southampton in UK. And we are the third center in Preston okay. uh, in Lancashire Teaching Hospital. Mm -hmm. We have done this study on 10 patients. Congratulations, Dr. Ghosh, on being the third center. So I hope it gains more uh, recognition on that. So what are the problems faced when we do such conditions? Uh, one of the major problem is cost. Right. Because standard screws and rods, uh, it costs in UK about 1,500 pounds. Mm. But if we use this particular, it's nearly 3,000 pounds, mm. so which is double the cost. So unless we have a very clear view that it is advantageous to patient in long run, and if it is advantageous to patient, it is advantageous to healthcare system mm. because you know UK is completely social healthcare. Exactly. Cost is a preventive thing, and we did study with 10 patients all the implants are provided by the company. Oh. So we haven't encountered any cost yet. Mm -hmm. So when we start using to buy, so cost will be a main problem. And it's a relatively new procedure. So in that sense, we still don't know the long term outcome. Okay. So it is difficult to say right now. So basically cost will be the main one right it, now. It, it will be. <laughs> so what will be the long term evidence that will it be beneficial or do we have any evidence right now? Uh, yes, we do to some extent. As I was saying, the three centers, the first center which has done was mm -hmm. in Israel. Mm -hmm. And in fact, this implant was developed or patented from Israel. Okay. Uh, and they have now 11 years follow up. Oh. And in their study, in 11 years, they have shown none of their patient has developed adjacent segment disease. Okay. So they're serving the purpose. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, in long term, it should gain 
popularity more popularity <laughs> i'm sure it will i'm sure <laughs> let's hope so what will be your take home message dr ghosh take home message it's still early days uh, i we we still don't have very clear view that it is advantages or not the study so far done has shown it is good enough compared to the conventional method with decompression and stabilization uh, but in long run 11 years follow up has shown that it has stopped adjacent segment disease so it can be tried but i think the long term results needs to be very clearly seen before we encounter this especially the cost issue <laughs> right thank you so much dr ghosh for being with us and thank for enlightening us on this new technique thank you thank very you. much